Hi everybody, and welcome to my studio. Today, I want to show you how I use plants from my garden to create a monoprint. I'm using a jelly plate and I'm brushing on some uh, nickel azul yellow, a very rich and transparent color. I just put the one color on for background. And then I lay my plant material, my first layer of plant material, on top of the jelly plate to act as a stencil. I'm using maple leaves from a tree just outside my studio door. And now I'm brushing the entire area with some transparent red iron oxide. This color will create some depth to the background color and will also outline the maple leaves that will be used in the background of the print. You can see the maple leaves are, are bright yellow on here and I want them more softer for the background. So I'm brushing on some more transparent red iron oxide and I'm gonna lay down some piglet blooms. These blooms are from um, an ornamental grass that I have in my garden. I left the plant material on the plate because I wanted to expose the color underneath making the uh, piglet blooms yellow. And you'll notice how the transparent red has toned down the maple leaves. I take an 8B pencil and I roughly outline the shapes of the blooms. I want these blooms to be the brightest area of the, of the uh, monoprint. So I wanted them to stand out. So I want to do everything I can to make sure that they do stand out. I painted some of the edges of the, of the maple leaves, again, just to make them stand out a little bit. Then I took some blue paint brushed it all over around the maple leaves and around the piglets. And then I took a shop towel, a dampened shop towel, and wiped some of that blue back, showing the original background. Here I taped off and put a frame of violet around the image, and then I taped it off again and sponged some light blue to create some visual texture. I wanted to create more depth, sort of a harmonized color over the surface and some actual texture on the surface. So I taped off the print and I added some embossing powder. To begin, I used the Versamark uh, clearing stamp and that stamp will collect and, and hold the embossing powder while I melt the powder. Make sure you apply a lot of the Versamarking just to make sure there's a good quantity to hold the embossing powder. I just poured the, the embossing powder on the surface. Making sure I covered all the area.
This is called Vintage Beeswax Baked Texture by um, Seth Apter. Once the embossing powder is poured over the surface, I pick up the whole print, I tap it on some wax paper, and collect all the excess um, embossing powder. Then I use a heat gun and I melt the, the embossing powder. I should really hold the uh, heat gun in one spot, but I got a little impatient. Here I added a white pine branch, rolled it on the surface, lifted it off, and hoped that the uh, branch embossed the, the, the hot surface of the embossing powder, leaving an impression. I put on a nitro glove and just wiped some raw umber over the surface to tone down the back of the, or the bottom of the um, embossed powder, and hopefully to make that white pine branch, that white pine branch um, stand out. You can see a bit of that pine branch is, is visible. Then I took a slightly damp shop towel and wiped it back and called it done. Thanks for watching.